Hi everyone, my name is John Borodine and I'm here to talk to you about Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. It's a New York Times bestseller from 2011 that in 2018 saw a successful movie adaptation directed by Steven Spielberg. The book is set in the year 2044. Everything's gone in decline, everyone's miserable, and afraid what's gonna, the future's gonna hold. Kinda like today, only much worse. But everyone is able to escape this for a while in a virtual reality world called The Oasis. Think of The Oasis as a web browser, but, it's a, but it allows you to access in a virtual reality world that you can like go to class, have a job, but also play uh, an online MMORPG set in a fantasy world mixed, mixed with uh, mystical fantasy and science fiction. The creator of this oasis, named James Halliday, just before his deathbed announced he had hidden an easter egg inside this virtual reality world where whoever finds three keys and unlocks this egg inherits his fortune and company at Gregor's Games. Everyone's of course searching for the keys but cannot find them and you begin to wonder, does this egg actually exist? But it turns out that it does. And this is where it comes to our book's protagonist, Wade Watts, a teenager from a rather broken family in Oklahoma City, finds the first key, and is the first one to do it, and it reinvigorates everyone to, keep, to look for this egg. However, this also brings about the book's villain, Innovative Online Industries, or IOI as it's shortened as they're known throughout the rest of the book. They're trying to get this safe so they can take control of the company because if you take control of the company you take control of the oasis and you can do whatever you want to it so and of course they intend to strip basically what makes it unique and just fun for everyone so wade watts and his friends are rushing to get all three keys before they do think of this book as a a mixture between the matrix and charlie and the chocolate factory it is full of pop culture references from the late 70s and 80s and somewhat of the 90s. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, Star Wars, Star Trek, Atari, Nintendo, there's just so many to list off that I'd be going on for several minutes. So if you like pop culture, retro pop culture to be precise, and science fiction, I highly recommend this book. It is a fun read. Thank you for listening and have a good day.